Hey guys, um, it's uh, it's almost New Year's, it's almost 2021, um, so I know it's late, I know most of you guys are, might, might be up, my, my family's asleep, so we have about 15 minutes until uh, 2021, so I thought I would make a quick little uh, video on a little, little bit of some scriptures that the Lord's been laid on my heart, and maybe challenge some of you guys um, as we go into a new year. Um, so basically my little message, I guess, I guess the message that I want to share tonight would be called how biblical is your relationship with Jesus? How biblical is it? Is your relationship with Jesus biblical? Okay. Um, this has been a trying year for all of us, you know, with, uh, with the, with, with the, with the virus thing and, you know, all people losing their jobs, our family with sickness and our family with my wife. It's been it's been hard for a lot of us, uh, but the thing is, is how's our relationship with the Lord doing? Are we just are we just walking through the motions, or do we have a tight tight relationship with Jesus like we ought to? Um, I'm going to share some some scriptures, and uh, my goal is not to upset anybody. My goal is not to start an argument or anything. Um, but I, I I feel a burden like like John the Baptist did in the wilderness. Uh, to, to, to bring the mountains to bring the mountains down low and bring the high places the low places up high to challenge people in their relationship with the Lord so how biblical is your relationship with Jesus you know I ask people a lot of times um, how, how, how often do they read the Bible you know God gave us God gave us uh, his word to read it uh, he did not give us this book to carry it to a church. He didn't give it to us to to look pretty on a on an end table. God gave us His Word uh, because the Scripture actually says that though heaven and earth pass away, God's Word will stand forever. That's the only thing that's going to stand forever. Okay, your 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 body's not going to stand forever. Okay, you're going to get sick. We're all going to get sick, and we're all going to die one day. Okay, no one wants to talk about that, but that's we're all part of the ultimate statistic. Ten out of ten people people die but the thing that's going to stand forever is god's word and your soul your soul will last forever okay uh your body your body this little flesh things that we live in our body they're going to fall apart that they fall apart and they're going to they're going to die one day they're going to we are decaying right now as as human beings but the spirit our soul that lives in us the soul the soul is who you are it's your mind, it's your emotions, and it's your will. It's who you are. That's who you are. You're made up of a body. You live in a body. You live, You have a soul. That's who you are. And you have a spirit. Okay? When you're born, you're dead. When you're born, your spirit is your spirit is dead when you're born uh, to, your, to your parents. But that's the reason why Jesus died. Jesus died on the cross that you could be born again. Uh, there was a religious leader that came to Jesus and asked Jesus. His name was Nicodemus. He says, "How how can you know how you know what do I have to do?" He says that Jesus said, "You must be born again. You must be born of water and of spirit." And so, I tell people, uh, if you're born once, you're going to die twice. You're going to die physically and you're going to die spiritually um, in hell. And nobody wants to talk about that. Okay, nobody wants to talk about hell or anything. But Jesus spoke about it too. So let me, let me share some things with you. Keep this in mind as you go into 2021. Is your relationship with Jesus biblical? Is it biblical? Okay. In, in John chapter 14, 14, verse 15, I'm going to flip over here. If you got a Bible, you know, open it up um, and, and read, along, read along with me. I'm reading from the King James, um, whatever flavor Bible you have. Go ahead and open it up. Uh, John chapter 14 verse 15 you guys you guys have got about 10 minutes 15 10 minutes you guys can spend a little time in the word with me if you're if you're there and put down your your uh, happy New Year's glasses and and your happy New Year's hats and in your uh, in your drink hopefully you don't have too many spirits that you're drinking um, because that really uh, takes your focus off of the Lord okay John John 14 15 check this out 
you know, well, earlier I posted something that said um, that one out of uh, that one per, one percent of Christians have actually read their whole Bible. I'm talking about from cover to cover, read it, and somebody had posted, you know, they know that they know where they're going to go they're going to die. That they haven't read it much. Uh, that's really good that you know where you're going, but how do you know how to live for God if you don't even know His Word? Okay, so I encourage people to read their Bible. You know, uh, I you know. I have a Bible reading plan in my Bible I, I use to help me keep, it helps me keep track of where I'm at when I read. So uh, I, I encourage you to read your Bible. Hey, tomorrow's the first. You know, there's other little, little Bible reading plans. You know, here's one here. You know, read the Bible in a year. Read the Bible. Get to know Jesus. Ma uh, John chapter 14. Jesus says this, if, there's a condition, if you love me, keep my commands. Let's think about that. If you love me, if you love me, keep my commands. So what is God's commands? Well, God gives us commands. God gives us the Ten Commandments. What this thing on here on the wall is, our house. The Ten Commandments. Keep God first. Okay? Don't, don't bow down to statues. Don't pray to something. Don't, don't be praying to statues. Don't make, up in your, don't make up a God that's more suitable for yourself, saying that, well, my God, my God is this way. He would never do this. and That's called idolatry. The third commandment, the third commandment is don't use God's name as a four letter filth word. Don't use God's name in vain. You know, if you guys if you guys didn't know, God's last name is not damn. Okay? God's name is Jesus Christ. That's his name. His last name is not damn. Okay? The fourth commandment is observe the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Okay? So God God created the world in six days. He rested on the seventh. He commands us to rest on the seventh day to obey the Sabbath and have that day to him give it to God give that one day out of the whole week to God number five is honor your father and mother you know you we honor and Ephesians says if we honor our father and mother our days will be long upon the earth and things go well with us to live a long life is, is to honor your parents number six is you shall not murder okay killing and murdering is two different things Murder as you plan to go do it, okay? You shall not murder. But Jesus took it a step farther. Jesus says, if you've been angry with someone or hated your brother without cause, you've committed murder in your heart. God sees the outside as well as your heart. He sees everything, murder. We need to obey that. We don't need to be murdering. We don't be hating people like that. Number seven is you shall not commit adultery, okay? Adultery is kind of like a little, a little broken heart, okay? You, you 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 don't cheat on your you don't just cheat on your spouse, you don't run around on your spouse, but Jesus took that even a step further. Jesus said, if you've ever looked with lust, you've committed adultery with that person in your heart. God sees the inside as well as the outside. Do not commit adultery, guys. You shouldn't look with lust, ladies. You shouldn't look with lust. Okay, you should have pure thoughts, godly thoughts. If you're born again, if you're God's child. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Number eight is you shall not steal. Steal looks like the number, like a number eight, like like the like little uh, like little uh, uh, robbers glass, like robbers masks. Okay, you shall not steal. Okay, it doesn't ma matter. The, the, it doesn't matter if it, you, you stole an ink pen or a million dollars. You're still a thief. Okay. Number nine, you shall not bear false witness. Don't tell lies. It doesn't matter how, how what color the lie is or how big the lie is. It doesn't matter how far you stretch the lie. It's still a lie. There's no such thing as a white lie or a little lie. It doesn't matter how far you stretch it. It's still a lie. And the scripture says that all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 21, 9 says that. The last one is you shall not uh, you shall not covet. Desiring things or wanting things, wanting more than, that, that, that doesn't belong to you. So Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commands. You know, a lot of people say, well, Stephen, that that doesn't apply to us. We're in the New Testament. We're not under the law anymore. People say that all the time. Because, you know, Jesus already came, they said. Well, I'll say what it is. Jesus said this. Jesus said this in the Gospels. I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. He did, Jesus didn't come to get rid of the law or the commandments. Jesus came to fulfill them. And when you're born again... When you, when you cry out to God and say, God, I've broken those commandments. I deserve the hell that you're going to send me to. I need you to save me. Because, guys, I don't care that tomorrow 
is, is, is January the 1st. People are going to make New Year's resolutions. They're going to try, well, I want to lose more weight. I'm going to read the Bible more. I'm going to treat, treat people better. Guys, you cannot do things on your own. You cannot do things on your own. You cannot live a Christian life trying to do better. Because the Christian life is not turning, turn, turning over a new leaf. It's not, it's not trying to turn your life around. You have to have dependence on Jesus Christ. That's it, period. Jesus said it is finished when he died on the cross. When he died to his last breath, he said it's finished. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. Going to church won't save yourself. Going to a priest won't save yourself. You know, none of these things, you cannot get out of it unless you repent and put your faith in Jesus. Like you put a faith in a parachute if you jumped out of a plane. You don't just believe in the parachute. You put the parachute on to save you from jumping out of the plane. Okay? It's not enough just to believe in the parachute. And then John and uh, John 14, 21. John 14, 21, Jesus says, He that hath my commandments and keep them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Jesus said, if you have my command, if he who has my commandments and keeps them, not just, not just keep them on your wall, but obey them. It is he who loves me. You know what? If you love God, you obey him. You know, if Jesus gave his life for you, ladies and gentlemen, what do you owe him? I tell that to a lot of folks. If Jesus gave his life for you, his precious blood, what do you owe him? A night of the town? Going to the bar? Hanging out with bad people? Sinning all the time? Sleeping around? No. You owe him your life. If Jesus died on the cross, you owe him your life. Will you, in 2021, make a resolution to say, Jesus, I give you my life and I need your help? To live a godly life maybe maybe you're maybe you're uh, in a bad relationship you know the reason why you're in a bad relationship the reason why people get into bad relationships is because they're not being the person that they're looking for if you're wanting a godly person to start acting godly start trusting Jesus start following what he says and stop being a pretender and be a contender stop being a, cont a pretender stop pretending and be a contender I know these words are hard, people. I know I'm not Joel Osteen. I'm not just giving you, you know, tickling your ears, scratching your back. This is truth, guys. This is serious business. You know, in the days we live, Jesus is coming back really soon. And people go, oh, well, we've been hearing that forever. Well, the Bible actually says that in Second Peter. It says that the people in the last days will say, well, people, you know, people have been promising Jesus to come back. He hasn't come back yet, but he's going to. He's, he's coming back real soon. So I want to encourage you guys. We need to really examine and take our spiritual temperature. Um, you know, everybody takes, everybody's wanting to take temperatures these days. They want to, they want to put a little temperature gun to your head and make sure you don't got a virus. What you need to do is you need to take your spiritual temperature more than anything. You need to make sure you're right with God. You need to make sure you're right with Jesus Christ because He's coming back, and uh, He uh, He's looking for a bride that's w without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. And this is, uh, this is serious business right here. Romans 6 verse 1. And I know if you guys don't like it, man, just turn it off, man. Just stop, stop listening. But if you want to hear truth, this is truth. Romans 6, this is Paul says this. What shall I say then? Shall I continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul says, should I just keep sinning? Because God will just forgive me, in other words? Does that sound right? But see, that's the day we live in. We're like, oh, well, God forgives. God forgives. God forgives. But Paul says, shall I continue to sin that God's grace may abound? And this is what he says in verse 2. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in it? Praise God, man. How can we continue to live in sin? You know, uh, if we're dead to sin, if we're dead with Christ, then how can we continue to live in it? You know, it's like this, guys. Let me find my little book here. See, this little book here, if I take this little piece of paper, let's just, maybe this is a confusion, you guys. 
So Jesus died on the cross. Okay, let's say this is all of us. And let's say this is Jesus, okay? Jesus was nailed to a cross, okay? But the Bible says that God put us in Christ and crucified Christ to the cross. We were included in what happened to Jesus. You understand me, okay? We didn't get crucified on the cross. Jesus did, but God put us in there. That's how our sins are forgiven because Jesus took the punishment for our sins. Jesus was also buried. He rose from the dead to give us new life. So Jesus' experience is our experience. So we can be forgiven. Why? Because Jesus took the punishment for our sin. Jesus put all, took all, all of your lies, all of your stealing, all of your drunkenness, all of your drug dealing, all of your anything you've ever done. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus still forgives but you have to turn from that you can't just say you know what god i'm sorry for fornicating but i'm going to keep doing it lord i'm sorry for getting drunk last night but i'm going to keep doing it that's like that's like me coming to you and poking you in the eye and saying i'm sorry and then five minutes later i come back to you and i poke you in the eye again say i'm sorry five minutes later i do it again i'm sorry eventually you're going to go Stephen. you're not sorry because you keep doing it Admit your sin to God and quit it. Admit it and quit it and begin to follow Jesus. See, guys, listen. I became a Christian at 21 years old. Before that, when I sinned, had no guilt. Didn't, it was normal. That's normal. And some of you guys that are believers, you understand what I'm talking about. But when you become a believer and you repent and say, Jesus, change my life, fix my mess, my life sucks. I need you to fix it. Things begin to change. It becomes a tug of war. You understand? Your 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 old nature tries to come up again, and your new nature, Jesus that changes you, that lives in you, you start feeling conviction. You start feeling you feel start feeling guilt, and it drives you back to Jesus to say, Jesus, I need you to forgive me and change me. I don't want to do that anymore. You have conviction. You begin to uh, be convicted of sin which before you weren't if you've never had that experience if you don't feel guilty and feel sorry to God if you don't have vertical repentance and it's only horizontal then maybe you're not really a Christian maybe you're not really a Christ follower maybe you need to do some business with God and repent see our a Christian's life should look different than the world's Okay. We should be we shouldn't be blending in and, and you know mingling in. We should be going a different direction in the world. We have to live in the world, but we should be going a different direction. Okay, that's how Jesus' life lives, and that's the life that lives in all of believers. You're going you're going to be convicted when you get convicted of sin. You repent, say God, I, I messed up, and and get up and move on. Don't wallow in the mud like a dog, okay, or like a pig. Don't do that. Get up. Jesus is faithful. Jesus is faithful to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And that's what he does. His blood is powerful to save. In, um, in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Matthew 7, 21. Oh, by the way, Happy New Year. It's 12 o'clock, guys. Happy New Year. Um, this is going to be a good year. Just to encourage side note, guys, this is going to be a good year. You understand? It'll be a year. It depends on how you you make it out to be. You understand? You know, this is the day right now that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's your choice, guys. It, that's your choice. You have to decide what, what kind of day it's going to be, what kind of year it's going to be. And man, it's going to be a good year. I, I, I declare it's going to be a good year. Thank you, God. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Jesus says this, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. But he that doeth the will of my Father in heaven. Do you guys get that? Not everyone that says to Jesus, Lord, Lord, is going to get in the make it to heaven they're not going to make it in the kingdom of god 
but only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. Are you, are you doing the works of God or are you living for yourself? Are you living for God, the things of God? Do you love the things that God loves and do you hate the things that God hates? You know, I'm just saying, guys, uh, oh, well, you know, I just get drunk every once in a while. It's not a big deal, guys. You know, I just get drunk every once in a while. Oh, really? So so did Jesus do that? If, if Jesus did that, then okay, but that's not the Jesus of the Bible. You maybe, you know, you need you, you you got to know the Jesus of the Bible. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that do, does the will of my Father. And it says this, and many will say unto me, Jesus says this, unto me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we have done, we've done many wondrous miracles in your name? And Jesus will say this, then I will profess to them, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. Can you imagine that? Just let just just for a second think about that. Standing before God, and Jesus says, Man, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity or lawlessness. And all that time you thought, Man, and you know what? I thought I was a Christian. You know, I went to church every once in a while. Sing a few songs. Didn't read my Bible much because, you know, Bible doesn't matter, you know, because it's boring. I watched TV more. Went to the bar more. But I was a Christian though, right? See, that's not the way believers live. You got to live a godly life, a holy life. That's the life that Jesus said. Jesus, Jesus says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And then Hebrews, and I'm mean, sorry, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 says, be ye holy for I am holy, God says. So our lives have to look different. Our lives have to look different than the world. Are you a pretender or are you a contender? Are you, are you contending for Jesus? Like I said earlier, if Jesus died on that cross, guys, you, you gotta wrap your head around. If he died on that cross, he gave his life for you, what do you owe him, guys? You owe him your life. Is Jesus precious to you? Think about your children. I have children. My children are precious to me. My wife is precious to me. But Jesus needs to be more precious than even my family. Is Jesus more precious to you than your children? Than your parents? Than your spouse? If he's not, you need to do business with him. Because there's going to come a day, guys. I'm telling you right now, Matthew chapter 24, there's going to come a day. You're going to have to make a choice. And it may be soon. Will you deny Jesus Christ when the government comes down on you? Whatever government that looks like when that day comes. Jesus said, they will hate you for my name's sake, Jesus says. They will hate you. Matthew 24. I'll read that to you real quick. This is heavy, man. I'm, you know what? These secret friendly churches, man. These with, with, with the with the kicking bands and the fog machines and laser light shows that you, that a lot of people go to on Sunday mornings, Saturday nights. You know they don't talk about this stuff, man. It's all about bounce house pizza, yo yos, and Six Flags. You know I'm not talking about that, man. I'm talking about the Bible. I'm not talking about the you know Christian entertainment. Okay, Matthew chapter 24. Jesus says this. They went on to the Mount of Olives. And his disciple, and he and he told them that you know the 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 the, the temple would be destroyed, and then his disciples asked when that would happen, and Jesus says this, and he answered them. They were on the Mount of Olives. And I'm going to tell you this: the Mount of Olives is about a quarter of a mile from where the temple stood, for the Golden Dome. If you ever seen a picture of Jerusalem, where the Golden Dome is, that's where the Solomon's Temple stood, or, or the Second Temple rather. And Jesus answered, "Take heed that no man deceive you." That's the first thing to know before Jesus returns. Take heed that no man deceive you. I'm going to tell you this right now, guys, offended or not, we're being deceived right now. This whole year, it's been like deception on steroids. So the things that we've been hearing has been deception, a lot of deception. Jesus said it would be that way, okay? Take heed that no man deceive you. How do you know, how do you know 
how do you how are you not deceived how can you not be deceived by knowing his word by reading this book okay then he says for many shall come in my name saying i am the christ and shall deceive many what does that mean well people are gonna come on go oh, i'll save the day they're gonna save the day everybody's gonna save the day follow me that's all save the day and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Man, think about what's happened with Iran and China right now. I just saw a, I just saw a news feed that now we're moving. The U.S. is moving an aircraft. The only aircraft carrier in the, in the Middle East is coming back home right now. Why? Who knows? You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars to see, uh, see that ye are not troubled. See, that's the thing, guys. We don't need to be freaking out over this stuff. You keep your peace. Why? Because Christ lives in you, the hope of glory. Jesus lives in you if you're a follower of him. Hold your peace. Be steadfast. Even when the things get bumpy, because it's going to get bumpy and crazy pretty soon, guys. You don't might not even hear that. It's going to get crazy. But hold your peace. Jesus says, be not troubled. For all these things shall come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, starvations, pestilence, diseases, and earthquakes in diverse places. For all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall ye, listen to this, this is, this is my question, is your relationship with Jesus biblical? Listen to this. Then shall they deliver you up and afflict you, and shall hate you, and shall uh, and shall kill you, and shall hate you, all uh, and all nations for my name's sake. Jesus says, "You're going to be hated for Jesus if you're not being hated. If you're not, if people think you're a little odd and peculiar, then you're probably doing the right thing." If people have no idea that you're a follower, if you don't, if your life doesn't look different than your friends, if you're just going out partying and getting drunk and fornicating and 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 just screwing around, then you look just like the world. Your friends don't know, and you don't have to worry about people thinking you're a follower because you're a pretender. Jesus says that basically you're going to look different. People are going to know that you're his follower, and they're going to arrest you. They're going to kill you. They're going to afflict you. But listen to this. Then shall many be uh, then sh many shall be offended. There's probably people listening to me right now that are already offended right now. That's fulfilling prophecy right now. Then shall many be offended, and they shall betray one another, and they shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity or sin shall abound sin shall abound 